So this is the last part in my wee mini series detailing how I use Power Automate with Azure Cognitive Services batch transcription function. If you followed along with the videos, that's brilliant. I hope you've learned something. I hope it's encouraged you to start getting your hands dirty with Power Automate and other services, not just Azure. In this part, we're going to be looking at how I parse the JSON response from getting the successfully completed transcription. How I retrieve the transcription result from Azure Cognitive Services. I'll be highlighting some of the issues I encountered while trying to analyse the output from this transcription result and get it in a format that I can save to a file. And finally, how I saved it to one drive. Here you go. So now that I know that my transcription is completed successfully, I can now go back and finish off my flow. And we're going to add some steps into this conditional statement here. But first, remember that our output from getting the transcription when it was successful was different than when it was still running. It contained those extra channel URLs. And we don't have that in our parse JSON response. So let's just update that action from the output that we copied to Notepad++. Now this next step is the bit that I found most challenging because I couldn't find out what to do next. I knew I had to get that audio file but I didn't know how to get it. So I had to enlist the help of a good friend of mine called John Condren and together through a bit of trial and error we figured out that we need to use another HTTP request and input one of those channels as the URI. I always use channel underscore zero because I figured there's always going to be a channel underscore zero. Before I go any further, I want to have a look at what that action returns. So my flow's run successfully, now let's look at the output of the get audio file action. And this throws me another curveball because the output isn't in a familiar format today. We just have a link that says click to download. And that looks, all it takes it looks like it's our transcript. I've got some stuff at the top and a whole lot of stuff there either, but that's not really in the, the same format as I'm used to, so I can't use that as a sample to parse my JSON. I've tried that and you only really get these kind of status codes, headers, X and S version to use further down your flow. I'll copy that to Notepad Plus Plus anyway. If you look at the start of it, we've got status code 200 headers. These are our headers, which get automatically passed in. And if we scroll along that body there, that's the bit that we want to use as a sample when we generate the schema in our parse JSON action. I tried different ways to convert that because that string isn't in the right format. The, the way I found around it is to go back to Power Automate, edit our flow, And what I did, I saved the body of the response that we get to a file in OneDrive. I'm going to use this step anyway because that's where I'm going to save the, the transcription text. But just to have a look at what that body looks like and to work around this problem of getting the sample for our parse JSON action, I'll save the raw body of the response I get from the get audio file action to a text file. So let's save and run the flow. We'll have a look at the contents of that file that we created. So that's our flow finished running. Let's pop over to OneDrive, have a look at our file contents. And that's the kind of thing that we're familiar with. So I'm going to copy all of that. And use that as my sample in the parse JSON action for getting audio file. I'm also going to paste that into Notepad++ to try and see what node that we want. Let's have a look at what it gives us. We've got a node here called combined results. Now if I just want a text file of combined results, I'll be looking at the display one. So I'll be going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
two, three levels down. I don't want just one big text file, one paragraph. I want my text file to display the transcript line at a time with some space between. So we need to look at segment results. So look how many levels down we're going. We're going audio file results, segment results, NB nest, and then display. So that looks like four levels down to me. So expect a few apply to each actions and their flow. First thing I'm going to do is initialize a variable, put the text of my transcript in. That's just going to be an empty string. Next I'm going to amend the create file here. Because I still want to create a file, we just want different file content. So let's take that out and use transcript text. Now we need to populate our transcript text variable and the way we're going to do that is get this display property and append it to the transcript text variable so you're essentially appending it to itself and to do that you can use the append to string variable Now let's have a look at what we've got from our parse audio file only goes as far as giving us segment results, so let's choose that. As I said, this bit becomes a bit tricky. So for each audio file results, I'm going to cancel and take that out. So we've already got our apply to each here. And this should give us more nodes. And I think the one we are looking for is NBS. That creates another apply to each. We're not on NBS either. We want the display of each NBS. So if we change that, that gives us our what first three nodes down. One, two, three, and it's the fourth node that we want. We can get to it's the display one. So I think that's it. So you notice there was a bit of kind of fiddling about there, you don't see all four layers straight away. You have to kind of go down a few layers first and then change the value and let it create the apply to each for each node for each layer, if that makes sense. And after display, we're just going to do two line breaks. And I think that's my flow complete. So let's save that and run a test. Oops, looks like I got an error in that run. So let's have a look at the problem. It's with our harsh audio file. Okay, so it's an invalid type, expected integer, when got a number. So that's quite a typical error when you use the parse JSON action. So essentially what happened, one of the nodes in our schema that makes up our parse JSON action was of type integer, but the response for the get audio file action contained a number on that node. So we can fix that by editing the schema of our parse JSON action. Let's just take the into notepad plus plus so we can see it easier. There's integer. Let's just do a replace. Replace all the integers with number. Paste that into our schema, and we'll save and run that flow again. So this time my flow has run successfully, but what about the contents of the text file? Let's go over to OneDrive. This is it here, and that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. So that's us now got a complete flow. It can be downloaded from my website, www.freefall365.com. I hope you learned something from those videos, and I also hope I encourage you to go out 
and do some work with Power Automate and Azure yourself. The reason I documented them in that fashion was because I didn't even consider looking at content services. I didn't think I'd be able to or have the ability to run HTTP requests to REST APIs in product services. It was only because I had a need and I needed to fulfill that need that I started dabbling. But now I feel empowered and I'm probably going to do some more work with Cognac services. That flow on its own fulfilled my need to transcribe some audio files to text. But now I'm starting to think about other uses for that flow. Can it be used in a Canvas app? Can it be used with Dynamics 365 for customer engagement or any of the other platforms that are built on the common data service? I'm eager to find out and I hope you are too. Until next time, blue skies.